everybody's afraid of octaves. I'm afraid of octaves. They come in so many different guises, whether they're in uh, pieces of music that uh, are very difficult to play because you have to keep them going for so very long, like. Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody number six, it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, or it could just be very brief in the Schumann Toccata. Or they could be in the Chopin Polonaise in A flat, the middle section. That scared me to death when I was a kid because I didn't know if I could sustain it that long and not feel like my arm was going to fall off until I figured out that I'm actually doing very little to keep that going. I'm just moving my arm around, but my, my, my arm is loose. Freedom and looseness of the arm is imperative for octaves, but overstraining the wrist is not necessary. For that particular passage, it's almost like just stirring something, you know, taking a, a spoon and stirring in the soup, you know, with a spoon or something, just moving around in circles. You can go on and on and on and on and not feel tired because you're just going in a circle, you can count a clock by circle. So how do we do octaves and practice them to avoid tension and to have supple wrists, relaxed arms, and not get tired playing them? It's a challenge, but I think everybody has a hand and everybody has a wrist. And one thing I remember Adele Marcus teaching about octaves, and she was a student of Joseph Levine who had perhaps some of the greatest octave playing of the 20th century, or maybe of all time of pianists playing. It was the way she taught the basic use of the wrist in strengthening muscles around that you don't get tired. You don't even need to be near the piano to do this. If you just sit elevated and let your elbows hang close to your sides, you just snap the wrist back like you're summoning the energy up, down, up, down, up, down. Snap it up, down, up. Now, when I go up that way, the fingers curl. She used to close the hand. I, to me, that didn't work for me. It worked for her very well. She had great octaves, Adele Marcus. And I just curve, I just do whatever my hand wants to do. Every hand is different. Up, they just curve. And then when I go down, I almost point my hand down. It doesn't have to be an octave. As long as I'm getting used to, and you get used to the idea of just up, drop. Right now it's just, if I were playing a piano, that's what would happen. It doesn't matter what note. I'm just getting used to relaxing the energy out that I've summoned up, that energy. To do that if you need to, just get used to that. Up, up. This is to develop that technique of snapping your wrist back and letting the energy down. And if you do that, somebody's going to come in the room and say, what are you doing? Well, basically what you're doing is getting used to the drop. Up, doesn't matter. I have my fingers curled. It doesn't matter. The idea is to get that. And then up. So that's how I do. Let's do the right hand alone. Snap it up. Think of the E's. Open up on the E. Open up. Drop and open. Up. The thumb is almost straight down at that point. You're not going to do anything like that. It's just going to drop down. So the thumb is pretty much on this part here. Usually when you play pieces, you, you play on the side of the thumb. Here, you're going to be closer in here so that you could develop. Also, you can drop and don't play the thumb. Just get used to dropping that way. But I think it's better to do that. Now, one thing that I learned that was incredible, and I couldn't do octaves because my hands were like this. And it was Adele Marcus who said, curl your second finger. When you curl your second finger when you drop, 
Not only does that avoid tightness, it relaxes the hand and it opens the hand. Just try it. Just, just put your hand up like that. Curl your second finger in. You get more span. It opens your hand because you're pointing everything out that way. And that's a wonderful trick. It's not even a trick. It's just a, it's, it seems natural now. Anytime I drop into an octave, my second finger is curled. It feels strange at first to do that, but after a while, it's where it wants to go because you're concentrating on the weakest part of your hand, that pinky. I call the add-on technique. I do that in a lot of teaching of many pieces when a student can't get a passage of any time any kind of passage in octaves or notes. I just say, just do one note, then add one. And another. And another one. And they say, that's going to take me forever if I'm doing an etude that spans three or four pages. We do them in small chunks. It actually takes less time to get it where you want to by adding a note like that because you're saving time from just constant repetition. You're reinforcing what you did before. So that's how you do octaves like that. Up, down. So when I do this, it's four times each note and I don't do more than three. So down, up, elbows hanging up. Four times each, up, F, up. Just snap it up, down. On the sharps, see where my third and fourth fingers go? Three, four, five on that top note. Mm -hmm. Left hand, I usually do G. That was E for the right hand. It just felt comfortable there. You could do anything, it doesn't matter. I do G. Up, down, up. to emphasize leaning slightly forward because that gives you natural back weight, your natural body weight into the instrument, into your wrists, into your fingers. Otherwise, you're relying just on this and you don't want to use any of this. This just hangs. Again, center, see where you need to be and do it. In doing stretching exercises, things do get tighter, and you want to always keep a loose wrist whenever you're playing anything. So I always do the octave stretch, even if it's a little bit one note per key in each hand, three or four of them, just to make sure that the wrists remain supple and loose.